time of mudslinging, lies, race-baiting commercials, and ad hominem attacks, this political season has yielded a brief and sadly isolated occurrence of one of the most powerful weapons in the arsenal of public discourse. Our third story in the countdown tonight, it's called Grace. You'll see it in a moment, but let's start at the beginning, an advertisement that started airing in Missouri this past weekend. As you might know, I care deeply about stem cell research. In Missouri, you can elect Claire McCaskill, who shares my hope for cures. Unfortunately, Senator Jim Talent opposes expanding stem cell research. Senator Talent even wanted to criminalize the science that gives us a chance for hope. They say all politics is local, but it's not always the case. What you do in Missouri matters to millions of Americans, Americans like me. I'm Claire McCaskill, and I approve this message. As we told you on Monday, Rush Limbaugh attacked the ad and Mr. Fox on his radio show, but you really don't get the full impact until you see it for yourself. In this commercial, he is exaggerating the effects of the disease. He is moving all around and shaking, and it's purely an act. This is the only time I have ever seen Michael J. Fox portray any of the symptoms of the disease he had. He can control himself enough to stay in the frame of the picture, and he can control himself enough to keep his eyes right on the lens, the teleprompter. But his head and shoulders are moving all over the place. So this is really shameless, folks. This is really shameless of Michael J. Fox. Either he didn't take his medication or he's acting. In fact, ask a doctor, Fox's involuntary emotions are not a side effect of going off his medication for Parkinson's, they are a side effect of taking it. When he and other victims do not take the drug, they become increasingly immobile. Eventually, they are unable to move at all. So how did Mr. Fox respond to Limbaugh's assault on his integrity? A crack about Limbaugh's own medication history, perhaps? In fact, no, he responded with grace. It's hard for people, and I understand it's difficult for people that don't have Parkinson's or don't know about Parkinson's to understand the symptoms and the way they work and the way medication works. Um, it, you, you, you get what you get on any given day. Rather than retract his baseless and factually incorrect assaults on Fox's integrity, Limbaugh first said he would apologize, quote, if I am wrong. Then yesterday he restated his claim that Fox had skipped his medication to embellish the effects of the disease as if it had been proven. And he went on to spin the story further, claiming that Democrats exploit infallible victims like Fox so that critics can't disagree. Let me call in Air America Radio Sam Cedar, whose uh, Sam Cedar show airs every weekday morning. He's spent a fair portion of this morning's program discussing both Fox and, I'm guessing, Mr. Limbaugh. Sam, good evening. Thanks, Keith. It's a pleasure to be here. Let me start with the obvious here. Should we not be deferring to Rush Limbaugh on this because he knows so much more about prescription drugs than the rest of the nation combined because... In fact, this may be his only area of genuine expertise. Well, if you're suggesting that perhaps uh, Rush is jealous of Michael J. Fox, that uh, Michael J. Fox gets his uh, medication via prescription, I think you might be onto something. Limbaugh said Fox is being exploited by Democrats, that Democrats are exploiting victims to insulate themselves from criticism. Let me play another campaign ad. This is from 2004. It was for a Republican, and then let me get your reaction to it. Biomedical research could cure hundreds of diseases, save thousands of lives, and prevent millions of tears. I understand that. And so does Arlen Specter. He helped double the funding for biomedical research. More dollars for more research, for more cures. Arlen gets it. It's that simple. I'm Arlen Specter, and I approve this ad to tell you there is hope for the future. So, Sam, I'm assuming Mr. Limbaugh at some point through the victim exploitation claim at the Republicans for that Michael J. Fox ad? Yeah, not that I can recall, Keith. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I think that the, the bottom line here is what you have is conservatives are are, are very worried that uh, people will actually see the real world implications of their policies. I mean, there's the same reason why we can't see uh, the caskets of our troops that come back from Iraq. It's the same reason why they attack 16 year old pages for being subjected to child predators. Uh, in Congress. I mean, this is all part of the, the fantasy world that they have to create for their followers, or, or, or people just won't subscribe to the ideology. We always try to see tipping points in, in politics. Bush had Katrina, Nixon had the Saturday Night Massacre. Was this just Rush Limbaugh's? I mean, he attacks a scandal-free actor who has a terrible disease, accuses him of faking it, issues a phony apology, comes back the next day and says he is faking the disease. Certainly even some of his own adherents have to now view Limbaugh 
as was uh, elegantly phrased by Harvey Levin today, as, a, as an oxymoron. <laughs> well, you know, I, I actually don't think it is a tipping point for him. I mean, I think he may lose some people uh, at the margins, but this is what his audience needs. They need to be inoculated from the real world truths of what the policies that the, you know, uh, the Rush Limbaugh's of the world espouse. I mean, if they see these things, they need Rush to be there to give them an excuse to not take it seriously, and Rush provided it for him today. You know, he basically said uh, disease is a liberal plot, and uh, the reason why Iraqi, uh, Iraqis are fighting each other is because they want the Democrats to win. It, it actually allows his listeners uh, a free pass on, on what reality is really about. Do you think this sort of underlines in a bright red ink the, the ties between the Republican Party and most of talk radio that somebody had said to Limbaugh, we need you to hit Michael J. Fox? and he would just go ahead and do it without realizing he'd wind up hurting himself to this degree? I actually think it's, it's more of a cautionary tale of uh, prolonged use of uh, hillbilly heroin mixed in with handfuls of Viagra. I, I mean, I, I think he's off the reservation on this thing. I, I, I actually think that Karl Rove is pretty upset about this because, I mean, look at all the publicity that that ad has generated. Uh, it's now a national issue where otherwise it would have been isolated in a couple of senatorial races. Uh, I, I think he's off base here. There is an anti-stem cell research ad that's also supposed to air locally, at least in Missouri, during the World Series broadcast. Ironically enough, that is being threatened at best by rain. It has athletes. It has the starting pitcher from Game 4 of the World Series. It has actors, people who are known less for their involvement in medical research than for their religious beliefs. It even starts in the Aramaic language with Jim Caviezel reprising his first line from the Mel Gibson movie, The Passion of the Christ, is the subtext that the GOP will no longer even pretend to try to address moderate independence with substantive debate as long as they can go out and shoot for that fundamentalist base and hope they can drag these people to the polls uh, in two weeks? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I'm not even sure if it's the subtext. I mean, it seems to be the text. Uh, you know, uh, They don't get that the reason why Michael J. Fox's ad is so powerful is not because Michael J. Fox was on Spin City or uh, because he was in Back to the Future. It's because he has the disease. I mean, he actually uh, feels the real-world implications of these policies. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think this is just an attempt to get uh, their base motivated to go vote. And frankly, I don't think it's going to work. I'm Jeff Supon of the St. Louis Cardinals, and I've suffered from blisters for many yeah, years. Exactly. Sam Cedar of Air America, great thanks for your time. Good to talk to you, Thank Sam. Thank you, Keith.